Good day, viewers, and welcome to today's edition of the Sport Rep Show. I'm Limba Mubetami, your host. From Lachia Ishetali's new Africa record to Namibia's Rugby World Cup preps, we have all this lined up for you for today's show. So without wasting any time, let's start with the hit list. Lachia Ishatele won a silver medal last night in the T11 400 meter final at the Paralympic Athletics World Championships in Paris. She clocked 57.18 seconds for a new Africa record. Namibia's brave warriors have been booted out of the Kosovo Cup after reaching a 0 0 stalemate against Botswana yesterday evening. Namibia started the day in need of three points with the hope that South Africa would beat Eswatini. While this was the case, with South Africa winning 2-1, this alone could not salvage Namibia's Kosafa dream. Now, of course, Hang Bota has stressed the importance of gathering relevant information before making a decision regarding adjusting his athlete Christine Bomer's testosterone level. Bota's comments come in response to the recent uh, ruling by Europe's top human rights courts in favor of Olympic runner Kasta Semaya. Well, that ends the hit list. Let's cross over to Athletics Break, that of course, which will be incorporated in Game Changer right after the break. Today's guest on Athletes World is none other than Alina Armas, a decorated long-distance runner. She competed at the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro and finished seventh in the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham in July 2022. The 39-year-old has been on form recently, finishing first in the Diaco Gaborone Half Marathon in Botswana last year, as well as winning the Spa Marathon and Sanlam Coastal Marathon earlier this year. Here on Athletes World, she shares some tips on how she's getting ready for the Vivo Energy Vintuk Marathon scheduled to take place on 29th July. Yes, and good day viewers, Athletes World back again with another episode and I am joined by the one and only Alina Alum Armas, how are you doing today, Alina? I'm really fine. Uh -huh. uh, I'm very much happy to be with you guys also. Ready for today? Yeah, ready, ready to show us a few moves on the track? Yeah, I'm really ready. Okay, well, Alina is going to show us how or what it takes to be a marathon athlete and what it takes for you to compete on the highest level. I mean, she's done it with the Commonwealth Games last year with the Sunlam Coastal Marathon. We will talk more about that, but we are getting ready for the 
Vivo Energy Ventuk Marathon that will be taking place on the 29th of July. So please do make sure to register and get us there because registration is only until the 21st of July. So definitely tune in and make sure that you are there and you are part of this journey. Your life could change at any second, but you'll never know until you take the chance. With sports betting, number games, and online casino gambling, JSB is your best bet. Will you be Namibia's next instant millionaire? Place your bets easily online at jsbsports.bet or at any JSB location nationwide. We'll take you to the action anywhere, anytime. JSB where the next instant millionaires come to play. Strictly no under 18s. JSP supports responsible gambling. Winners know when to stop. But wait, Alina, let's talk about this. Um, Commonwealth Games mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. top eight. Yeah. Uh, the winner of the Sanlam Coastal Marathon, uh -huh. you went and won the Rossing mm -hmm. Marathon. Uh -huh. You won the Spa uh -huh. Marathon, but mm -hmm. the Spa Marathon and the Coastal Marathon were in the same month. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, okay. Tell me, how, what does it take to be a marathon athlete? Um, it was not easy. Ne. Uh, you always be prepared yeah. before you compete. Before you, you first get ready. You must always be focused for what you did. Yeah. It must be a marathon. Mm. Uh, you must always be focused you and must train be hard. Focused. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, especially the ones that you won in the same month. Uh -huh. The spa marathon yeah. okay that was only 10 kilometers so yeah. for you it's maybe a walk in the park yeah. and then you went and won uh the sanlam coastal marathon yeah. preparations wise um the moment to go to 10k is not there for go there for winning it's going to prepare how was i'll be yeah from there i'm going to get a speed so they can go to run a, a full marathon there is for is for <laughs> it's for exercise <laughs> Yeah. So for you, 10 Ks is just for normal yes, exercise? Yes, just normal to exercise, to be ready for marathon. For the real marathon. Yeah. group of Arena Almas preparing for World Champ with Lucas, Joel, Simon, Matthias doing the fat trade there, kicking it right. Okay, Alina, mm -hmm. last year, Commonwealth Games mm. in Birmingham. Mm. I mean, you finished in the top eight. Mm. That's a huge achievement. Finished seventh to be exact. but. Just tell me, just tell me how was the experience there? I mean, you took on athletes that are of the topest quality. You competed yourself and you can say to yourself that you are amongst the top eight best athletes that were at the competition. How was it? Uh, the moment I went there, I'm always uh, listening to be my coach. Yeah. He always told me, if you go there, just do it. Don't do it, just do it. Yeah. I'm always listening to him. Uh -huh. The moment I went there, the aim to go there is me to be finish that race you because I know it's not easy. It's not easy. I yeah. know <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely you did really well. You did everyone proud. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now my question is for how long do you see yourself still taking part in marathons? I mean, you're still fit. Ooh, you still, you, you're still fit. You're it, still, you're it's still almost 28, almost there to run a marathon. So I'm almost 28. Yeah. Yo. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what people. What I only found out today mm. that I didn't know is that you work in the military. Uh -huh. uh, so how do you how do you balance the life of being in the military as a soldier <laughs> and also uh, taking part in marathons? Not only taking part, but winning <laughs> marathons. Yeah, um, I want even to give big hand for to our work. Yeah, they always focus o on me. Oh, so the mom the moment I have uh, uh, um, to prepare, they yeah. always give me enough time to prepare. They give you enough time off. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I mean, you work an eight to five job uh -huh. every day, and you're also an athlete. Uh -huh. You're participating in competitions around the world. So, does the job accommodate you to a point to say, okay, we know you're gonna go run next week, uh -huh. so we're giving you time off? Or how does that work? Yeah, yeah, because I'm also proud of my colleague. They always, uh, if they know I'm having an. Uh, uh, competition mm. nearby they always take part to do uh behalf of me uh -huh. they give me chance to prepare to prepare and uh -huh. get ready okay alina mm -hmm. uh, the marathon uh -huh. is taking place on the 29th uh -huh. vivo energy uh -huh. let's talk about okay uh -huh. how do you get ready for a tournament like this not a tournament but like for a marathon or preparation or preparation i got in moshke Tetetetetam, I pandurake and on Kutate Galunk. Yeah. Stivali and the pandura Pukochawange, Nadani Pamapet. Yeah. 
Shashi, kashipuku shini ngoo vauke. Kashipune? Onge nge una kwa nitae ku supporta. Uh-huh. Oswa hika shimata shiko meho. Yeah. Okuchane mo, mo, mo tereni nga nge. Eh, kwa tereni mwini ni hapo. Mm. Kuningo madeo. Eh. Kuninge set up. Eh. No kuninge push up. <laughs> Mala kwa kuchane. Ayandishi ningi shashwa mandike. Andishi eh. ningi no, no, spana, no spana etu. Aha. Uh-huh. Mwena kwa tereni mo coach wange. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Okay, so. Basically, that just means you can't do it alone. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, you stand on the podium mm-hmm. alone, mm-hmm. but not people don't know that you can't do it alone. You need a team behind you. Mm-hmm. You need people that are helping you mm-hmm. and all of that. Okay, but well, um, for the Vivo Energy Marathon, mm-hmm. how excited are you? Um, excited to go to run 42. For, oh, 42? If there's nothing problem, uh, I'll be uh, ready for 42. Okay. I can't even wait. I'm ready to prepare. <laughs> how, long, how long does it take you to finish the 42? It's almost two, uh, if, um, I'll be, if I'll be right, uh-huh. I take three hours. Three hours? Uh, if I'll be fast, I uh-huh. can make two, uh, two, uh, two hours fifty. Two hours fifty. <laughs> <laughs> but I want even to make empty promise, I'll go and try my You'll best. You'll go and try your best. Uh-huh. Okay, but now, okay, you know, for me personally, I think, me as a person, uh-huh. I, I'm an, I won't care. When you, when you go for a marathon, uh-huh. when you go run, uh-huh. Do you know that you're going to win? Or do you go with the hope which I can go even? Uh, oh, oh. Oh, no. eh. uh, the moment you go there, mm-hmm. you will not always go for win, winning. Okay. Sometimes you go for participation. Okay. You go for training. Training. Yeah. And you, the, the moment, especially as we are a champion, mm. you encouraging each other. Uh-huh. The moment the young athlete, then we sh- know, they saw you. Okay. Some of them are happy, some of them are, they want to see you in action because they will not even see you the moment because as we are at uh, Birmingham, yeah. Olympic, mm. um, some of us we want to even to touch Halina but the moment yeah. he saw me at the TV, it yeah. is not easy. But it's when he easy. came to at the Vivo Marathon, the marathon I want even to, to you, invite yeah. them to come and take part. Yeah. There is not even 5k mm-hmm. to come and just run enjoy. for fun, enjoyment, run for fun. Ex- Bring us your family, yeah. then we come enjoy together. Okay, uh, exactly. Well, there you hear it, guys. I mean, uh, if you want to see Alina Armas in the flesh, if you want to touch her in the flesh, Vivo Energy Ventuk Marathon is the place to be. Okay, I think we've done enough talking. Uh, I think it's time for us to maybe uh, just, just warm up. Uh, small, small, and then go to Shona to say uh, we are ready for the day. Yeah. Okay, okay. so okay. maybe we should take a small <laughs> job just to... <laughs> To warm up the legs. Okay. <laughs> so this is how many times a week do you exercise? Oh, almost uh, the week. Every day. Mm. From, yeah, from, from, from Monday to Saturday. Definitely <laughs> was not easy. Hey, like um, congratulations to Alina Armas and to the marathon athletes. That makes it makes this look like it's something simple, and yeah, uh, for me, no, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you can see, <laughs> it's here dying because she sees that it's not for me. But on the 29th of July, 29th of July is really the big day. Alina Armas is gonna be there. I think I'll take part in the five. Oh, you? I think I'll take part in the five oh, just for for, for con- fun, for fun, yeah, and for control also. <laughs> so. Um, 29th of July, Vivo Energy Ventuk Marathon is where we are going to be at. So definitely do make sure to tune in. And Athletes World, bringing you all the local legends, all the local sports, people who have done it in the game. For example, her herself. So yes, please do stay tuned. This is Athletes World. That was Brian Monango with Alina Armas. Now with that, let's head over to the Sharpshooter segment right after the break. Brave gladiators of Namibia will face Equatorial Guinea in tomorrow's African women's qualifier match set for 3 o'clock in Johannesburg, South Africa. 
We caught up with defenders Viwe Kuchipati as well as Lidiana Nanamus as well as the rest of the squad as they gear for the match. Hi, I'm Lidiana Nanamus. Um, I'm Bewedi Wa Kuchipati. Um, the team has been preparing very well. Uh, we've been working really hard. Uh, we understand the assignment and we are ready to take on Equatorial Guinea on Thursday. Yes. Um, I will also say, say the same thing from my side. Uh, the team is ready um, and you know at this moment we don't really have a lot of information from Equatorial Guinea so we are just concentrating on ourselves, focusing on our strength and uh, we are really looking forward to the game. Okay, uh, Guinea has not played a couple of matches for a couple of years or they have not played for quite some time now. Do you think that gives you guys an advantage over them? Um, definitely not because we don't really want to look at the facts that is happening now. We, we are just going to, um, based on what we have seen of them, they are a great team. We are not going to underestimate them and uh, we are just going to prepare very, very well for whatever is going to come. So the fact that they haven't played doesn't give them a, a disadvantage. So we just very, very much preparing for a very strong opponent. Yes, um, I think we've been focusing on what our strengths are and what we can bring to the match because we obviously want to turn up victorious. So our main focus right now is what we have and what we have to offer. We are, um, as, as you said, like they haven't been playing for a while. Obviously, we don't know what to expect, but we know that we are out here to give it our all and to represent the country very well. Best of luck to the gladiators ahead of that match. Now, up next, we have our special rugby segment, and that, of course, is Lajol. Don't move an inch. After winning the Rugby Africa Cup 2022, Namibia, led by its captain, Johan Daisel, has obtained its qualifying ticket for a seventh Rugby World Cup participation in a row. Beside Triple World Champion South Africa, Namibia is the best African team in terms of Rugby World Cup partic participations. They've been part of the competition since 1999. For this year's competition in France, Namibia's first game will be against Italy, New Zealand, France and then Uruguay. We caught up with Torsten van Jarsfeld, a Namibian professional rugby player. Check this out. The young guys are, you know, happy performing so far. Well, I think the boys have been really, really working really hard, and uh, I think this year we've got a bunch of really talented players. Definitely the best group we've had since the 2015 World Cup. So really excited to see what we can do. Yeah. So you've been here before. Um, looking at your pool at the moment. Uh, what is the mindset going into these uh, yeah, we know it's going to be a hard pool. We know there's a, there's a there's, there's teams with great talent and great experience. And I think we just, we'll just take week by week. We will we'll have the, uh, objectives to do during the week. And we know that the first objective is trying to win our first game in the World Cup. And I'm sure this year will be the one. Yeah, so the couple of days it has been quite chilly in terms of training. How are you guys coping? Yeah, it was, it was quite chilly, a lot of wind. I think the best thing is just uh, we adapted really well to training conditions. We never know what's the training conditions or the playing conditions in France. It might be a little bit of rainy, it might be sunny, so I think it's good to adapt to every every condition possible. We'll be ready to go. Yeah, so in terms of the preparation, um, obviously the, the instructions, the tactics that are coming in, are you happy with the, what the technical team is doing? Yeah, 100% happy. I think this year we've got uh, the staff is probably the best staff that the number of us ever had. A bunch of um, guys with a lot of experience that work with really big teams. I'm excited to see what we can do with all the structures, all the instructions to, to, to do the World Cup and see what we can do in the Nations Cup. Yeah. First things first. Yeah, so you're already based in France. The World Cup obviously is, is, is in France. Maybe some motivation advice that you guys are you, you giving to your, your teammates? Yeah, I think the first thing is go, go out there and enjoy the moment. It's going to be, it's going to be insane. It's going to be amazing. All the French people are going to be there to, to, to support us, for sure. Um, they love the Namibia, so they'll be there supporting us. Probably not against France, but the rest of the team, I'm sure, the stadiums will be sold out. So it's really exciting. The first things first, to do the camp, to do the Nations Cup, and we'll take it from there. Okay, now apart from the, obviously, still looking at the World Cup, your personal, um, what are you going in for into this World Cup? I think everyone's just going in to try and, uh, try and 
be a better player, try and leave the jersey in a better space, a better place after we after we play, you know, someone else will, will come and play in your, in your number again. So I think the first thing is just to try and show the people what we can do as a country, try and represent our country really well, especially the people who are here, try and support us, and especially to all the players who don't make the team. You know, it's always something that's a, it's a bit hard thing, but we dare to represent whoever makes this final squad to represent everyone, the players that don't make it, the people in Namibia, the people around the world, so that's obviously the first one. Alright, now just lastly, the people that are following you, your fans, you know, the, the guys that love the rugby, any message perhaps for them, whether it's in Afrikaans, whether it's in English, just a shout out. <laughs> no, just a shout out to all the fans, thank you for the support, and uh, we look forward to representing the country in this uh, Nations Cup coming up, and thank you for, for backing us, you know, we are a small country, and but we we definitely going to represent this country really well and looking forward to a bunch of great players stick with us no matter what thank you so much for thank speaking to us much. thank you this month on dstv premium nora is back as life in the big apple continues to surprise her and her outrageous family and friends i have an idea you do, yeah. you do. Two families battle for the coveted camp trophy in this hilarious family-friendly movie. That was fun. That was something. And F1 hits the tarmac as Red Bull continues their push for dominance. Absolutely epic! It's your moment to be entertained by staying connected to DSTV Premium. We are almost at the end of today's show, but before we close off, we have Ari Hohad with International Sports News. Don't move an inch. Good day everyone, time for International Sports News and starting off with tennis news first. It is Wimbledon that continues, it's week two and the finals will be played this coming weekend. On Saturday it will be the women's final and the men's final will be on Sunday. News from the women's draw is a big result for Elena Svetolina. She is from the Ukraine. Uh, she's through to the semi-final and she beat uh, the number one seed Iga Sviantek of Poland by 7-5, 6-7 and 6-2. That game was played in the quarterfinals and uh, it's a big result for Svetolina. And uh, she said that the war between Russia and Ukraine made her stronger um, to be successful in this tournament. The Ukrainian will now play Marketa Vandrasova and both of them are unseeded. That is uh, both Svetlina and Vandrasova. In Vandrasova, she beat uh, Jessica Pagula of the United States. That was 6-4, 2-6 and 6-4 for them to play in the final or in the semi-final. And uh, one of them will play in the final of Wimbledon on Saturday. In the men's draw, it's a good result for Novak Djokovic. He continues his winning run and uh, he beat Andrei Rublev in the quarterfinals. He's through to the semi-final as well. And it is uh, Novak Djokovic that is trying to emulate Roger Federer by winning eight men's singles titles in this year's uh, tournament. Also through to the semi-finals is Yannick Sinner of Italy. He's a number eight seed and he beat Romain Sufilin of Russia. And the score there was 6-4, 3-6, 6-2 and 6-2 to also to advance to the semi-finals. And continuing international sports news with Formula One racing news, uh, the next Formula One race will be the 23rd of July. There's no Formula One race this coming weekend and uh, the one on 23 July will be the Hungarian Grand Prix. News from Formula One is uh, related to the Alpha Tauri team and it is announced that Daniel Ricciardo, he will race uh, the next or the rest of the season for Alpha Tauri. And that's the changes being made by the Alpha Tauri team. Daniel Ricciardo, very experienced driver and he will replace Nick De Vries. Uh, Nick De Vries from the Netherlands but he didn't have a good season in 10 races. He couldn't get one point on the points table and uh, so he is uh, replaced by Daniel Ricciardo. Daniel Ricciardo said it, it's nice for him to back in the Red Bull sa saddle or seat so to speak. Um, it is not the Red Bull team but it is uh, the sisters team of Red Bull that is Alpha Tauri that he will be racing in and the 34 year old Australian is no stranger to Red Bull. He won uh, seven Grand Prix that was between 2014 and 2018 and all of those seven wins was in a Red Bull Honda uh, car racing car. So it's uh, good for the Alpha Tauri team to have Daniel Ricciardo back uh, racing for the rest of the season. 
And concluding today's international sports news, it is uh, Tour de France cycling news. It's the premier Tour de France, the premier cycling event on the men's calendar. And uh, it is stage 11 or stage 10 that was concluded rather. There's uh, 21 stages in total, so quite a few stages still to go. But stage 10 result, it is Pelo Balboa of Spain that won in uh, 3 hours, 52 minutes and 34 seconds. And uh, he's, uh, he beat George Zimmerman into second place. He's from Germany. And third position, Ben O'Connor of of Australia. Pelable Bower didn't really challenge the leaders on the general classifications. Um, he is now in fifth position, quite a few minutes behind the leaders, and it is still Jonas Winnegard and Tajes Pogasa leading. It is Jonas Winnegard. He's leading in a combined time of 42 hours, 33 minutes and 13 seconds, and Tajes Pogasa still 17 seconds behind. In stage 10, both of them finished on the same time, uh, but now in stage 11 will be 180 kilometers. There's also three climbs in that uh, 180 kilometers, but the last 20-30 uh, kilometers are quite flat and it's expected to be a sprint finish to the end. So at the moment still, it is uh, probably going to be decided between Jonas Winnegard and Tajes Pogasa, who won the 2023 Tour de France cycle tour. That's international sports news for today. Hope you have a great sport day and we talk international sport again tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for sticking with us throughout the show. We'll be back again tomorrow. Same place, same time.